Welcome to this three-part course series on AWS Bedrock. In the first part today, we'll go over what is AWS Bedrock, all the pricing and information that you need to know, and create a free AWS account and our IAM user. By the end of the series, you will have code generated by a foundational model and saved in an S3 bucket through an API. The code is in the GitHub link in my description. Let's get started. So what is the process? Well, we're going to understand what is AWS Bedrock. We're going to create a free AWS account and an IAM user, create a Lambda function that will generate code from a foundational model using AWS Bedrock. Then once the function is called and the code is generated, it will save the output to the S3 bucket and we will use the API gateway service to create a REST endpoint to call the Lambda function and use Postman to test this. We will also use CloudWatch to look at any logs for issues and make sure it was successful. Okay, so briefly, what is Amazon Bedrock? Well, it's essentially a service that provides access to foundational models from various companies like Cohere, Meta, and Amazon itself. Bedrock is a fully managed service that makes the foundational models from the companies that I just mentioned via an API. This makes it easy to utilize other large companies' foundational models. And you know, we don't have to worry about managing any infrastructure. And you know, some of the use cases that we can start with are text generation, image generation, uh, text summarization, and you can even create chatbots. As I mentioned before, they have models from leading AI startups and including Amazon themselves. And for image, you know, they do have stable diffusion. And also what's nice with Bedrock is it is in scope for common compliance standards and also in compliance with the GDPR. By the way, if you like all the code that I used and all the information about the services that we are using, click the link below, sign up for my free newsletter, and you'll get a free PDF about all the information needed for this Bedrock course. Now, before we start setting up all of our services and start coding our Lambda function, we have a few more pieces of information to go over that are really important. And the first and foremost piece of information that we need to have and need to understand is the region that you're in matters. And why the region matters is, well, first off, I am in the uh, Northern Virginia, which is US East 1 region. And I see a, when I see Try Bedrock, there's a Get Started button. And that's good. If you see that, then you're good. You can click this once you, you know we go over creating an account and everything. Then you can come here to the overview page of Amazon Bedrock, and this is where we're going to start everything. You know, we can go to the playgrounds. We can see all the providers for the foundational models, and we can test everything and so forth. And we'll get into this. But if I go back and I choose U.S. East Ohio, which is U.S. East Two, it's going to refresh this page. And you see, there's just a learn more here. So if I click this learn more, it's going to take me to another page. And you know, this is this is some more information about uh, Bedrock, right? But if I click on the get started with Amazon Bedrock, so this just takes me back to the main page. Now, if I go back and switch to US East North Virginia, the get started is here. So I click this, you know, I'm back in the overview. Now, if I switch back to US East Ohio, guess what? It kicks me out, right? So that means I basically don't have access with that region to use Amazon Bedrock. Okay, now I'm, now I'm switching back to North Virginia, US East 1, and I have access. And that's not the only thing here. The, before we can use any of the models, we need to go over the actual model access. So on the left-hand side here, at, uh, towards the bottom, there's this little link here that says model access. If we click that, you can see here what we need to do before we can use any of these models is request access, and we have to be granted access to use them. It only takes a couple minutes. It took uh, most of them; they were automatic. But I believe for Anthropic here, uh, once I uh, requested access, it took a few minutes before I got an email saying, "Hey, okay, we grant you access." So depending on the model you want to use, um, I would choose something cheaper but still good, maybe like Claude Three Sonnet. Um, you could even just use. Uh, Claude, if you wanted, or you could come down here, you know, also got Llama 3, uh, 8 billion parameter instruct, um, and so forth. You can choose whatever one you want. And oh, and also stabilities, um, they only have one, at least in this region for um, stable diffusion, extra large, um, you can use that as well. But this is where the region matters again, because you can see I have all of these here to choose from. But if let's say, you know, I'm not in Europe, but let's say I chose Europe Frankfurt, which is EU Central 1, I believe. Look, I only have a total of six models that you can choose from in this region. So just because you can, in a region where you can use Bedrock, you don't have access to all the models for your region. So just make sure where you're, wherever you're at, 
that you have access to the models that you want, and maybe you can change uh, like a, to another region that's somewhat close to you that you can use these. So let's say that I wanted access to, let's say, Llama 2, let's do uh, Llama 2 13B here, right? I want, I want access to Meta's Llama 2 13B. Well, I just click this available to request, then you can request model access and I already have, you know, it has the ones that are check marked. I already have, except for this one. So I want to also have uh, access to this one. So I'm going to click next and it says, you know, I'm modifying my uh, model access and I'm going to hit submit. And it says it may take several minutes to receive or remove access to models. For this one, it already granted me access. So I'm good to go to use this. If we go back to the overview, one of the nice things that you can do if you just want to get started, Okay, if you just want to get started, you can use the playground and you can start chatting and seeing how these work. So if we go to chat, the open chat playground, you know, they have examples here for you of models that you can use. So for instance, if I choose the Llama 2 chat 13 billion parameter model, um, it comes up here and says which model you're using. And it gives me a prompt to go ahead and start a sample prompt that I can use. So if I were to run this, I'm going to get an output or a completion from the model. And then you can scroll down here and here are model metrics. So uh, it tells you what the input token count. So this was our prompt and the output token count, which is our completion. Now the playground isn't free. And this leads me into the last part before we start uh, getting into all of our services. And that is the pricing of these models. So back in our overview on the left hand side under getting started, if we choose providers and the example I'm going to be using today is the Claude model from Anthropic. So I'm going to click Anthropic here and this shows you, they give you actually example prompts that you can use. And uh, Claude 3 Opus, one of their newer models, this is coming soon. It's not here yet, at least for my region, it's not here yet. So we're going to be using the Claude 2 model. And then if we scroll down here, just before we get to the pricing of this, I just want to let you know also the API requests will have to be modeled based off the samples that they give you. So for instance, the actual prompt that we give it in, in the body, it needs to be modeled similar to this right here all right so we will get into that and i'll show you but like this slash n slash n then the human colon and then the actual prompt that we want the ai to help us with where it's like writing a simple uh function python function for us or whatever it is and then we need to have the assistant all right and then we can give it some of the parameters like the max tokens the temperature for variance um, top K, top P, and so forth, okay? But this is going to be different per model. So if I go to Claude 3 Sonnet, as you can see, it's a little bit different. But going back to Claude 2, if we go to the pricing, this is how you can find out what this is going to cost. But if we scroll down here, this actually has uh, all of them, right? So if we scroll down to Anthropic, so Claude 2 slash 2.1, price per 1,000 input tokens. So basically our prompt is less than a penny. The price per 1000 output tokens, so the completion is about two and a half cents. And one that's going to cost you typically, and I think this is just a little bit more common, that uh, costs more is the uh, stability diffusion. Oh, scroll down too far. Uh, stability diffusion, yeah. So we have access to the 1.0 version and it's straight four cents per image generated for standard quality. For you know better quality, it's going to be eight cents. Okay, so those are the basic things that I believe that you just need to know as a foundation for AWS Bedrock. Now we're actually going to set up our free account and create an IAM user. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is set up our account and then create the IAM user. So create a new AWS account, and whenever you do this, you will need to put a card number in. Okay, they just. You just have to, but don't worry, I'll be guiding you through it. And if there is a service that could give you charges, then I'll let you know. I'll also let you see just during my little testing with my new account, how much uh, charges I have incurred. You will, like I mentioned, use money for the playground and you only really need money for using the foundational models. So once you create a new AWS account, just by clicking this button down here, You'll go through, I think, five different steps. And whenever you're done, you'll you'll be able to log into the AWS console. But I already have my account, so I'm just going to log in with this. All right, I already have my account. So this is actually my root user. And the first thing I do want to show you before we create the IAM user is my actual cost. So if I just highlight over here for the cost and usage, you can see that the SDXL version 1.0, it 
cost me 16 cents in the playground, right? Because each uh, image production or to produce an output of an image was four cents per image. And I did it four times. So in total, I've only really used 23 cents, which isn't much. I didn't do a ton of testing, but it was enough to make sure everything works. Okay. But the next thing we're going to do is create an IAM user because it's not really good practice to use your root account to um, access all these services and do everything that we're going to do. So you can come up here to the search and just type in IAM and just click on it and we'll go to this service. Now I'm going to go create a new one with you. So whenever you come to your dashboard here, um, users, it says I already have one because I've already created one, but I'll create another one with you. So just click the user's number when you may not have any. So you may see uh, you may see this first where you can create your first user. So all I'm going to do is over here on the top right, click create user. Okay, so here we can just give it any name. So I'm just gonna say Tyler dash BR for bedrock. And then this checkbox here, you want to choose this because this allows um, this allows us to whenever we log in, it's going to give us an auto generated password. But we can also say when we log in for the first time, that user must create a new password. So we want to create an IM user, I'm just going to give it an auto generated password. And again, you just check this uh, box here. So we must create a new password at the next sign in, then we're going to choose next, there's a couple of things we could do here at this point, they recommend using uh, creating a group and then adding this user to that group so that we can manage the permissions by a job function or any of a service access or, you know, have some custom permissions. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to say attach policies directly. And we're just going to choose administrator access. And this just allows us to not worry about permissions for using all the services that we need. Now, if we scroll down, we're going to choose next. And as you can see, we now have we automatically got the IAM user change password because we basically allowed console access for this user. So we're good here. Just click create user. And what you can do at this point is you can see I have a console password. This is the auto generated one, or I can download the dot CSV. So I can download the dot CSV. So I have my credentials. And whenever you open up your credentials, you see it has a username, the password, and then the console sign in URL that this is what you would give to that user so they can uh, start accessing the services that you want them to. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. I think you can just click this, right? It's going to take you to another login. So I'm gonna open my spreadsheet back up, uh, go to the username, that's going to be the IAM username. And then for the password, I'm just going to copy this auto generated password, put this here, I want to choose the sign in. Okay, now I have to create a new password. So my old password is going to copy that again, um, create a new one, uh, put that back in. And then nope, oh, that is not the same. Let me try that one more time. There we go. So confirm password change. And now we have officially created an IAM user. Now I know I showed you my credentials, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one because I already have another one that I'm going to use. Great. Now we can get started with the Lambda function. Okay. If you'd like this introduction to AWS Bedrock course and setting up our user and our account, well, the next part in the series where we have all the fun and we do all the coding in the Lambda function. I'll see you next video.